Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to show you how to use Auto Prefixer in Gulp. Now, what this does is it allows you to just type your CSS as is without worrying about browser prefixes. Then, when you save and you can run your task, it's actually going to automatically add these browser prefixes where your CSS needs it. Now, this makes things a lot easier because you don't have to remember what uses a browser prefix, and you don't have to use things like mixins or compass to actually take care of your prefixes for you. So let's get going. We're going to use Auto Prefixer now. So we're going to be adding a new Gulp plugin like we have already, and this is going to be Gulp Auto Prefixer. Now, you can come to this package page, or you can just install it with npm install gulp hyphen auto prefixer. Or if you're using a package file, you can just add it to your package file that way. Now, let's go ahead and install this. So I'm just going to type sudo and npm install gulp hyphen auto prefixer. Now, we've done this probably 100 times, so you're probably used to installing uh, npm packages and you're probably already using a package file and you could just add it there. Um, but if not, you can just install it this way and it'll be fine. We're just going to have a variable prefix that is equal to require and then gulp auto prefixer. So that way we can have access to auto prefixer. Let's go ahead and just add it to our list of requires. Okay, let's get rid of the var statement here. And as you can see, we have each of these after a comma, last one as a semicolon. Okay, so we now have access to Gulp Auto Prefixer. Now you can pass Auto Prefixer all sorts of options. If you come to the GitHub page for Auto Prefixer itself, you can scroll down here and see what sort of browsers you can use by passing this options. So you'll notice that you can say auto prefixer, give me the last one version, um, you know, greater than 1% Internet Explorer 7. So there's all sorts of options you can have here. And all we have to do is pass these into the auto prefixer function, uh, just as the strings are here. So let's go ahead and just copy this last two versions, you can see that it targets the last two versions of each browser. Now that seems like all I need to support. What browsers do you need to support in your code? Well, that's up to you, but I'm going to use last two versions. Now let's come back to our code here. And then in our styles task, before we save our code to a specific destination, we can pass in another pipe and within that pipe. And now we want to use the prefix function. So we can just say prefix uh, because that's what we have uh, brought in our auto prefixer as. And then inside of parentheses, because this is a function, we can pass this a string, that string being the last two versions that we copied off of the auto prefixer page. So what this is saying is, okay, compile your SAS, make sure there's no errors and then prefix to the last two versions and then output it to CSS. Now for the sake of this example, I wanna go ahead and change this to expanded. Uh, that way we can see exactly what happened. Instead of with compressed, it might be a little bit difficult to see those actual prefixes when we look at our CSS. So let's go ahead and run this uh, gulp task. Now we can run this gulp task simply by running gulp styles, just like that and then enter. Okay, you can see that our CSS has been compiled and reloaded. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's open up our CSS and then our main CSS. And you'll notice we have nothing crazy going on. Well, let's check our SAS to make sure that there is some properties that would be getting some browser prefixes. Now, obviously we need a CSS3 property that needs to be prefixed for this to work. So let's go ahead and uh, add one here. We can just do a transition. So we can say transition, and then we can have this be all 0.2 seconds and ease, just like that. Nothing, not a big deal. Okay, now let's go ahead and run our gulp tasks once more. Now you can just hit up, on your keyboard to rerun that same command, and you'll see it's compiled your uh, SAS code once again. Now, if we browse to our CSS file, you'll see that this has automatically brought in WebKit transition. So it's bringing that WebKit transition for the last two versions of browsers that don't support WebKit transitions. 
So check it out. This is Auto Prefixer. If you want to use something other than the last two versions, which I imagine you would, check out the Auto Prefixer GitHub page, which I'll post in the description, and you can see exactly all of the options you can then pass in to Auto Prefixer. It's pretty great, and it'll cover anything you need. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook, pretty much anywhere. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.